All right, here we go. January 19th. I've got some really cool stuff for you guys. I, I usually try and get in here a little earlier, but I've been tied up on, on other webinars. So a lot of cool stuff going on. Keep me busy. I'm a lot busier this year than I was last year. I played on the boat a lot last year. <laughs> but this time I've kind of made the commitment to come back to the table and uh, help everybody out and get everybody on track. So I'm I'm back in the game. Uh, one of the things that's really cool, I'm going to show you guys today, we'll answer everybody's questions first. But uh, one of the things I wanted to share with you guys is how I automate my systems. And specifically the webinar system. Uh, I make a lot of sales with webinars. And I'll show you how we do that, how I automate it, how we turn them into evergreen. And it's a, it's a great sales vehicle. If you guys are not doing webinars, you're probably missing the boat, especially if your customers are online. It's a really, really good sales vehicle. Um, it's, it completely follows the ACT program, though. Everything that you're going to do in marketing, you need to know your market. You need to know what's important to them. You know, I keep coming back to all this stuff because it is so important. <clears throat> Figuring that out. If you don't figure out your market, you're never going to be able to talk to them effectively. And if you can't talk to them effectively, you're not going to communicate your value and you're not going to be making the sales that you could be making. It's just that simple. It, it really is. And as simple as that is, it's very difficult to do. <laughs> I have trouble doing it for myself, believe it or not. I'm really good at this for everyone else. But when it comes back to myself, it's like I turn into a bumbling idiot. <laughs> and so don't feel bad if you're, you know, if you're feeling like that. It's a normal feeling, especially if you're not used to something. Getting getting used to the whole process is it's going to take some time. You know, the program is really good. It it gives you everything that you need to know. And then the weekly calls here, if this is your chance to get on. If, if you don't understand something or if you need to kick something around, um, I'm happy to do that with you guys. Um, you, you've probably seen already that I've you know, done reviews on people's sites or people's big ideas, all that stuff. So don't be afraid to hop on here. I'm happy to help. And I do it because it doesn't just help you. You know, this is this is a group effort here and it helps everybody. Because there's a lot of people on here. I've, I've been getting a lot of feedback that that you guys are like, you feel this is over your head. And this call is for all levels. There's some people on this call that have been here for years. So they're they're way ahead of you. There's some other people that just got in today. So they're behind you. It's perfectly okay. Wherever you're at, it, it doesn't matter. The thing that matters is that you show up and you advance forward. And by other people's questions, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn what you don't even know to ask yet. So it's 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 a great group and it's a great way to learn. So I definitely encourage you guys to keep showing up, keep asking questions. And if you don't know what to ask, just listen in. The other people will ask the questions for you. So with that said, um, I want to open it up. I see some some. Friendly faces, I don't want to say old friendly faces, but people that have been around with me for quite a while that are just showing back up. You know who you are. I'm not going to call you out and say you're old. <laughs> but, and there's also, you know, a lot of new people. So welcome to all of you that are just getting in with it. Uh, one of the things I'm going to share with you today is the webinar process that I use and I'm actually setting this webinar up for one of our new members. He wanted to promote the ACT program as an affiliate. So I said the best way to do it is with a webinar. So I offered to do a webinar with him. So we're going to do a webinar next week. And I just set up all the stuff. So I'm going to show you all the pieces that I put in place. And I literally just did this yesterday. So the whole campaign, beginning to end, was built yesterday. 
and it was in Kartra. We've been talking about Kartra a little bit. So I'll just get in there and show you under the hood and you can see what it's all about. So anyway, anybody with questions before we get started? Anybody that's got burning questions you want to get out of the yes. way up front? I do, John. Okay, go ahead, Joe. Welcome. Long time. Back. How are you, my friend? Um, Where's the fish? Where's the fish? The fish, he's he's behind me. I got him blurred out. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I actually do, I, I have two questions. Uh, I have a webinar, okay? I think you're going to be pretty proud of me. Awesome. We have over 600 people registered. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and what's the capacity on that Zoom program? Because it says okay. 500, I think. Yeah, Zoom has a live capacity of 500. So what happens, like when the 501st person tries to log in, it's just going to tell them that the webinar is at capacity. So two things about that. If you have 600 people registered, I can almost guarantee you 500 are not going to show up. Yeah, I know. I so, know. We still have a couple of days to market it. <clears throat> yeah. I just don't, you know. You for you to get 500 live on a webinar, you'd probably have to have about 2,000 people. Okay, that, that's what I figured. Yeah, yeah. So okay. don't worry, don't worry about that. <clears throat> and the other thing, don't forget to record it. <laughs> Seriously, I have other people in charge of that, John. Okay, well, make sure you get a big old whooping stick out, and they know not to. Messed uh, that up. <laughs> yeah, they they know enough to let not leave me in charge of that. But yeah. now the follow up question is, how do we track like we we know where most of them are coming from, but we don't know exactly. So okay. how do we track it? Um, there's there's a lot of different ways to do that. Are you using Kartra? Uh, yes. Okay. In Kartra, it's a lot easier because you can tell. Kartra gives you statistics built right into it. I thought it did, but how mm -hmm. do we use it? <clears throat> so you can go into like page statistics. You can go into this. Everything in Kartra has statistics. So like, for instance, if they came in through uh, a Kartra page and they signed up, they used one of the Kartra opt-in boxes. So you can get the analytics off that opt-in box. And you can also see who opted in. Um, another way that you can do that, if you want to know like where they're coming from, you can set up multiple landing pages for multiple traffic sources. Like if you want to know who came off search, you send all the search traffic to one page. Right. And then you have an opt-in box and it'll tag them, you know, tag them for search. Yeah. Okay. That that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. But I don't yeah. think my people know the. Yeah. I think. <clears> yeah. Just... That that's a uh, that's probably the easiest way to do it. I don't know that it's or actually that that's the the fastest way to do it. I don't know if it's the what the separate landing pages. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It solves the problem. It's easy to do. I don't know. Ultimately, like if you had a ton of traffic sources and. You know, you could wind up having, you know, a whole bunch of pages for this, depending on how many promotions you're doing. Yeah, but it's easy, right? You just duplicate them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's yeah. what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. So what you do, you duplicate the page and then you duplicate the opt-in box. And then each opt-in box is unique for that page and it assigns a tag. Okay. All so right. That's, awesome. That's probably the cleanest way to do it. You'll wind up with a lot of opt-in boxes and a lot of a lot of pages, but that's okay, you know. Yeah, well, we're we're getting better at this. I do, you know. Mm -hmm. They're just signing up, so I guess we and it it all came from the ACT program, John. Okay, awesome. It all yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. I I love to see it work. I it's, love to it's see working. it working. It was shocking. <laughs> it was shocking. So. But That's it does awesome. work. It does work. That is awesome. Yep. Just make sure, like with a with a webinar, this is your presentation. 
there's a lot of different formats and formulas for a webinar, but ultimately the webinar on the front end before, prior to the webinar, really important that you have a good big idea. And I know Joe has been working on these big ideas for a long time and he's getting good at coming up with these things. So you, it might take a lot of big ideas. Trial like and you, error. <laughs> yeah. You might have one big idea for your search traffic because you know that's a segment and they're interested in a particular thing. Your people on Facebook or in social media, they might have different, you know, different dreams, different desires. So you need a big, a different big idea for them. So it's, uh, it's really expandable. This is, this whole system is incredibly scalable, but you got to get one thing working first before you start scaling. So you get one thing, you figure out, you know, one presentation that works, and then you throw 10 different big ideas on the front of it. You grab 10 different traffic sources, and now you're fueling it. So it's incredibly scalable. So Fran, you got a question it, there? If you do it in order, John, right? Oh, yeah, it's got to be in order. <laughs> you have to do it in order, or you're going to... You, it's going to cost you a lot of money. You spent a lot of money doing it out of order, didn't you? <laughs> okay, Fran, go ahead. Your question, you got to unmute there. Hi there. Okay. Hi, John. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, quick question. I hope it doesn't take a lot of time from people, but on a, I'm putting together my, my ebook or my flip book for my um, affiliate book. Okay. And I'm having trouble finding um, a software that will let me include the links unless I do all the pages in like a template. Is there any solution for that? Okay. In Flipbook, I know what Flipbook is, but I haven't used it specifically myself. I am pretty sure that you can put links inside the Flipbook. No. Because you can't. I have not, I, they tell me yes, but you have you can, but you can't do it in your PDF. You can do a PDF and add the link, but you can't. Once you upload it into the flipbook or the ebook, it changes and and it's not dynamic anymore. Okay. Yeah. You probably the best bet is to go on to Fiverr and find somebody, find a provider that is familiar with Flipbook. Tell them what you want to do and see if they'll do it for, you know, a few bucks. And then what you can do is you can look and you can see what they did and then you'll know how to do it. But I know, you know, most documents you can hot link like any kind of a word document. You can put hot links in yeah, uh, PDF. And I've, I know I've seen the flipbook deals with hot links in them. So I know you can do it. Right. I'm just not sure how I don't I'm not familiar with the with the process of how you build those flip books. Yes. Thank you. That 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 helps. I thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Rashid. Well, I got a couple of questions. First, now that the uh, chat GPT is practically out of reach, do you have <laughs> some something else we can use for, for that purpose? Yes, absolutely. If you download my AI book, <clears throat> there's a bunch of stuff in there. In fact, I, I'm making updates to it right now. Um, probably by the end of the day, I'm going to update the core file with the book that's got more information in it. I worked with, uh, with Gregory this week on creating some prompts. So I've uploaded some prompts in there that you can use. You can literally just copy them. It's how you grab, you know, all the data from your avatar, pull it in there, and, and just it it just is awesome the output of it. But that's that's using Chat GPT. Um, they have had some issues with scalability, I believe, because they opened that program up to the public for free, and the first week I think that over a million people sign up for it. Everybody was jumping on it. So it was timing out and it was telling you, you know, the, it's over capacity, check back later. But if, inside the AI book that I put out, I've got some paid services in there that use the API versions of it. 
and they've put templates on it, which make it a lot easier for you to use. Like they've got templates for writing titles for YouTube videos. They've got templates for writing articles for your business. They've got templates for writing Facebook ads. So they, they've kind of templatized the format of it to make it easier for you. And uh, one of them is called Jasper. Jasper has just added a bunch of templates to it. People love it. It's using the back end of the chat GPT, but it's using the paid part. So it's not going to time out. It's not, you know, not going to give you issues. And it's, you know, it's fairly affordable for, you know, for what it is and what it does. All these, all these things are, they're phenomenal. They are literally game changers. I've been using these things to write copy now for the last few weeks. And I had, I've had actually Jasper for quite some time. I just never used it. It was one of those things I bought it, set it on the shelf and got busy with other stuff. And then when chat GPT came out, it grabbed my attention and I started playing with it. I'm like, oh my God, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> so the whole AI thing is really got me back focused for automating things and, and growing at a more rapid rate. You know, for those of you that were on when we did our year end process, <clears throat> and we went through that whole document. This makes it so much easier to create content to create to, you know, to generate leads. It's phenomenal. So really, really cool stuff. All right, Russ, welcome back. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Speaking of old school, I'm trying to see if there's any new, new uh, thoughts or tools for SEO in 2023. I think the uh, the Chat GPT actually is probably your best bet as far as content. The other thing, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but Chat GPT will actually write code for you. Like if you want schema code, you can tell it, hey, I've got a business, I've got I have a local business, here's my parameters. What would be the best schema code to put on my web page to get more search traffic? And it'll write it for you. And you just wow. drop it in the HTML. You you could ask it like what tags are pertinent. And you can give it the data. It will actually write all of your title tags, your description tags, your, your OG tags. You know, that's open graph. If you guys aren't familiar with that, open graph is what most of the social media platforms use. It's how they generate the data. Like if you put a post or something <clears throat> and you put your website, it's going to put a, an icon for your website it's going to put a, a title and it's going to put descriptions and it's going to automatically pull that stuff from your OG tags. If you don't have OG tags, those open graph tags in your website code, it's not going to know what to pull. And in some cases it won't pull anything at all. So if you put like, say you put a link in Facebook and you want to control what is in that link, you know how, when you put a website link, it'll pop up a picture of the website or, a, you know, a picture of something to represent the website. It's getting that data from the OG tags. That's called open graph. Super easy to do. It's just a title tag that you plug into your HTML um, if you've got a web developer, I can assure you he knows how to do that. If he, he or she doesn't, then you need a new web developer because that's pretty basic stuff. <laughs> if you're doing your own website, let's say you have a WordPress site, uh, there's a lot of plugins that help you with SEO that will make those really easy for you. You just put in some simple information and it writes the tags for you. Um, in the Kartra system, it's got that built right in where it's just plug and play. You just plug in your information and it writes the tags for you. So cool stuff. But that would be, you know, a really good thing for you to start with is, is that chat GPT. If you're looking for off-page optimization, for those of you that are not aware of the whole SEO world, that search engine optimization, it's, it's the criteria that the search engines look at to decide who's going to be at the top. 
If you get a top listing on Google, for instance, however many people search that term, you're, a top listing, a number one listing will get about 34% of them to click on your website if all things are equal. The thing that can give you an advantage and give you, you know, more than 34% is your title and your description. That's all somebody has to choose. Like when they do a search for a keyword, a web page comes up in Google and it's got 10 listings on it. So they have 10 choices. By default, the top one is going to get 34%. So if there's 100 people a month searching that term, then 34 of them on average are going to click that top listing. If you were in the number two spot, you could potentially get more if you had a better title and a better description. Some of the stuff, some of the tricks that I use to get more clicks and more clicks will show Google that you belong at the top. So it will move you up in the ranking. If you're on number two, three, four, anywhere on that first page and you get more clicks than is expected, they think your content is better than the rest. So they start moving you up. So here's some of the tricks that I use to get more clicks to show them that. I will put dates in the title. Like I'll put, you know, the most relevant whatever in 2023. So when people look at the page and mine's the only one that has a date on it, they assume all the rest of it's old and out of date. So whose do you think they're going to click on? They're going to click on mine. So that's a, that's a really good trick that you can use in your titles and your descriptions. Another thing, and this is the part about the big idea, when you have something that's compelling, curiosity will get people to click every time. So in your descriptions, you guys have probably seen, you know, I know it's been a long time since late night news was really a thing, but remember in the old days when you'd watch TV between 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. and they'd put these little news trailers on to get you to watch the 11 o'clock news that you didn't really want to stay up and watch, but they were really good at cliffhangers. They would throw out these little, you know, 10 second, 15 second, 30 second bombs that just made you stay up till 11 to watch the news. And quite often, the thing that you wanted to see was at the very end at 1129, and it's absolutely worthless, but they got you to stay on for the whole half hour just to get it. <laughs> That's the game that we're playing here. It's called curiosity. It's like, you know, they say curiosity killed the cat. Well, curiosity is going to get your prospects to click. And, it, the, you know, and we talk about this being a mousetrap. So the better you get at the curiosity in your titles and your descriptions, the more search traffic you're going to get. The more search traffic you get, you'll have more chances to convert. And you're going to get more customers. It doesn't matter if it's in a true search engine or on Facebook or YouTube or anything else. This game, this is a thinking person's game. You have to really think about your market. What are they interested in? What's going to make them curious? What are you going to be able to throw out there that if they don't get the answer, they're not going to be able to sleep tonight? <laughs> you know, Just like those guys writing those, those headlines for the 11 o'clock news. That's what you need to become. Another really good example of this in real life was the National Enquirer. Do you know how many people at the checkout register in the shopping, you know, grocery shopping? You're not in there to buy, you know, newspapers. They sell millions and millions of magazines and newspapers in the checkout, in the register checkout in the supermarket. Because of those headlines, the people are really good at the headlines. So if you think about that, that's how you get customers. That magazine sells millions of copies because of their headlines. It's not because of their content. Their content not, is not necessarily the best. But they acquired the customer because they were good at curiosity. So if you, if you learn nothing else today, you need to learn how important the curiosity factor is.
That's a big piece of the big idea. The big idea is what grabs attention. If you don't grab attention, you're not going to get to play the game. <laughs> so it's it's really, really an important factor. So I think I got derailed or sidetracked there. Did I answer your question, Russ? <laughs> Yes, you did. I'm good. Thank you. Oh, oh, I, I let me come back to it. I remember what it was, it was about SEO now. SEO. <laughs> so that's the on-page stuff. And the the other thing that I miss telling you about my my tricks for conversion there is I will actually truncate the descriptions. Like with a dot dot dot. Google and, and most of the major search engines, they only have so many characters that you can use, and then they truncate it themselves. So what I do is I create shorter ones because I want to control the truncation. Truncation just means where they cut you off. So you'll be reading the text and then it'll be cut off. And then it's like, you got to click to get the rest. So I will control where it's cut. I'll say, you know, get the best dot, 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 or find out how you can dot, dot, dot. And they're like, find out how I can what? <laughs> you know, if they're already interested in it, they're going to click on that. So cut it, control the cliffhangers, get them to click. And then the other, the other piece of SEO, there's three pieces to SEO. There's your on-page optimization, which is all about your content. There's off-page optimization, which is other people that link to you. This is like where you list your site and directories now people can link to you from those directories and they can visit your site from different sources rather than the search engines. If Google sees all of your traffic coming to you from them, they don't trust that so much. But when they see other traffic coming to you from other sources, they have a built-in sense of FOMO, fear of missing out. So if they see other people sending traffic to you, they want to jump on the bandwagon. And they will start listing you and sending you their traffic. So incoming links, they also look at this as like a popularity contest. Whoever has the most incoming links is going to be seen as being the most popular. Now, that said, there's been some algorithm shifts and changes over the last few years. With Google's AI, it's figured out that not all links are created equal. It's no longer looking at just how many links you have. It's how good they are and how many people follow them. Like if you just went out and you, you went on to Fiverr and there's a bunch of people selling garbage links on Fiverr. I do not recommend that. They'll give you 10,000 links, you know, for 30 bucks. Now Google's going to see 10,000 links. They're going to say, oh, wow, you know, we should take a look at this. But when they start looking deeper, they're going to say, Oh, that's a little fishy, 10,000 links and nobody's following them. So all of a sudden they're going to say, yeah, that site's trying to game the system. We're going to knock it down a little bit. So you do not want to do that. You want to put your links on sites that make sense, that have your prospects on them and can drive traffic to you. A perfect example of this is finding a, a source, finding a website, a business that you have you share the avatar but not competitively like for instance a mortgage broker and a real estate agent that is a perfect synergistic connection so it makes sense for them to link to one another if you are or a title company you know if you're a mortgage broker you know everyone that you work with is going to need a title company so you can link to the title company the title company can link back to you and you have the same customer. So sending them back and forth, that in Google's eyes shows value. So the more value that you present, they're going to want to, you know, that FOMO kicks in. They don't want to miss out on something good. So you have to show them that you have good content and you're relevant and people like you. So that's the on-page factor of, of SEO. And then the third factor, and this has completely come in in the last several years based on AI, the AI experience in Google and the search engine is figuring out what a good user experience looks like. Because a lot of that stuff is easy to game. 
but the user experience, the actual interaction between people and websites, that's very difficult to game that system. So when people come to your site, let's say they go to Google, they type in a search, they see your website and they click on it. They land on your website and it's a complete mess. They don't know what they're looking at. They don't get what they don't see what they're expecting to see and they click back. So that's called a bounce. If you have a high bounce rate, you're telling Google not to send people to your website. They're not getting what they want, right? You do not want a high bounce rate. Google does not like high bounce rates. So if they, if they, if you get them to your website, I talk about this, like when I'm talking about people developing websites, you are above the fold should be your big idea. Remember, big idea, what's the purpose of it? Grab attention, right? If you don't grab attention in the first second, the first two seconds of the experience, you're going to lose them. In the old days, it's like magazine ads. People flip the magazine. They flip the page at about one, one for, per two seconds. So you literally had two seconds to stop them from flipping the page. It's the same thing here. Them flipping the page electronically is the back button. They're going to go back to Google and they're going to select someone else. And you're going to send the signal to Google that, hey, you, you shouldn't have sent that person here. They didn't like it. And guess what? They're going to stop sending people to you. You give them that signal enough and you're done. So those are your three big pieces. Those are the big core components of SEO these days. On page has been the same for as long as I've been playing the game. The off page has been the same since about 2010. And the user experience has really kicked in over the last four or five years. So that's, you know, that's the state of SEO today. Much more difficult than it once was. <laughs> but it forces you to do good. It forces you to do the right thing create good content for your audience. First of all, figure out who your audience is, figure out what they want, create good content for them, and then put it in front of them. That's the game. If you do it right, which we call that marketing, if you do your marketing right, the search engines are naturally going to like you. They want to send people to, to places where they get a good user experience. And if you know your audience and you're giving them what they want, that is a good user experience. So that in itself is SEO, search engine optimization. So there, Russell, now I think I got you bundled up. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Sorry, some of my answers take a while to get them out because there's, this is why it's important to get on the calls. If you email me that question, I'm not going to give you that depth of an answer. You know, I'm not going to sit here and type out for 20 minutes all the answer. And for two reasons. One, it's going to be the time factor, which isn't nearly as important as the next factor. The next factor is I'm spending all that time to help one person. Not that I don't want to help you. But like what Russell did here, that helps the group. I will spend an enormous amount of time to help the group. I don't mind at all. So, Jim, go ahead. You want to share your video SEO secret that you shared with me earlier? The one about, <clears throat> about YouTube, putting it on your site and the embed? Yeah. Okay. So this goes back several years that this recipe was formulated. And this is if you want to rank a YouTube video and help the rank of not only your video, but also your website. So you create a YouTube video and you make sure your keyword is in the title of the video. That's really important. You also make sure before you load the video up to YouTube, you name the video the keyword. So whatever the keyword is that's most important to you, name the video file that keyword. So if it was dog training, dogtraining.mp4, that would be the name of your video. You load that up to YouTube. You title it dog training description. It's got dog training and stuff that's relevant to that in it. 
Now, when you publish that video on YouTube, you get the embed code. You put the video embed code on the page in your website that is about dog training. You center the video on the page. Right under the video, you put a, an H1 or an H2 tag that is dog training or whatever your keyword is. It matches the title over in YouTube and you link it back to the YouTube video. So whether they see the YouTube video on YouTube or they see it on your website, the link goes back to the original source on YouTube. Google loves their own properties and they own YouTube. So when you link from your website back to one of their properties, they see that as a, a big bonus for you. So that's kind of kind of one of my little recipes for <laughs> helping to rank a YouTube video. <laughs> and if you think about it, you could get more traffic off the YouTube video on YouTube than you potentially could on your own website. So you link them back and forth in the description. This is another thing in YouTube. When you put your URL for your, it, and it can be your domain or it could be a specific page. Like in this case, if it was a dog training video, you would want to link to that to that page on your website specifically. And you put that as the very first thing in the description of the YouTube video. It can't be later on because it won't be hot linked. But if, if the code in YouTube sees the very first part of the description that starts with HTTP, it will hot link that in the description on the page. And now you've got a live link to your website from one of the most powerful properties on the internet, YouTube. So that's a really good incoming link to get. So that's, uh, did I miss anything there, Jim? Nope, you nailed it. All right. Yeah, just uh, the it's HTTPS. Yeah. And colon then, yeah. forward slash forward slash. Yeah, the whole web yeah. address, whole URL. All right, Linda, you got your hand up there. Go ahead and unmute. Okay, so um, Abba and I are in a synergy group together. Mm -hmm. And so she sells lotions. I sell soaps. So you were talking about the backlinks. Uh -huh. so I was wondering how do you how do we connect? Like that, that would be a, that would be a perfect link pattern. So on your website, when you're talking about your soaps, you could also mention the importance of lotion. Like like after you soap up, after you get clean, the process of protecting your skin doesn't end there. It just starts there. So the next step is the lotion, moisturizing lotion. And then you could put a link to her website to the one that you recommend. Now, if she had an affiliate program, you could put an affiliate link in there and you could make some money on that referral. That's even better. And the same thing with her, you could give her an affiliate link to your soaps and she could do the same thing. She could talk about, you know, the best way to take advantage of my lotion is make sure that your skin and your pores are open. And I've got the perfect soap for this. Here's a link. That's the way you would do it. Okay. That, that's a beautiful example. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Tammy, go ahead. Unmute. Hi. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. Loud and clear. Super. So um, as of this week, I am putting together a uh, Canva course to help people on Alignable and just in general. And um, I've been researching what, um, you know, my outline and what things I'm going to be specifically addressing. And so I did some uh, keyword searching using um, uh, ubersuggest.com. Okay. And um, so that's how I was going to go about <clears throat> getting uh, my topics together. Do you have any other suggestions for me? Yeah, if you're if you're looking like for search things, actually go right to Google itself and start typing in what you're thinking 
And as you start typing, the suggestion box is going to drop down and it's going to give you recommendations. Sometimes it'll throw stuff out that it's brilliant. It's like, oh my God, I didn't think about that, but that's right on the money. So use that machine. You know, that's the machine you want traffic from. So you should learn from it what it wants, what it expects. The other thing, when you find the keyword that you're actually interested in, do actually run the search. Run the search, get the search results page in there. And if it's got a bunch of ads on it, that's a good thing. That means it's commercially viable. That means when people go to that search, they buy stuff. Otherwise, the advertisers wouldn't be spending money to be there. So that's a really good clue that that's a good keyword for you. The other thing, go to the bottom of the page and there is recommended searches. There's a whole section down there of recommended or related searches. Google is telling you what it sees as relevant. So if you take those, those related or relevant keywords at the bottom of the page that it's recommending and you intersperse those throughout your content, Google's going to see your content as being highly relevant. So it's more likely to put it up at the top. And if you're using something like the, the chat GPT, you can copy that list of keywords out and say, write me an article about this using these keywords ah. and it will do it for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, that was going to be one of my other questions was how to use the, the chat GPT because you had mentioned that you can use it to create uh, courses uh -huh. uh, for you. Yeah. So you just Absolutely. put the keywords in there. Okay. Well, there's a lot of stuff. In fact, uh, like I had said earlier, I'm updating my AI book. And I'm putting in a, a section in there of the prompts that you actually use to get good content out of it. Okay. Because it's like, it's, it's the same as anything else. It's garbage in, garbage out. If you give it good questions, it's going to give you good answers. Yeah. I've, I saw somebody using it and they, they just put a keyword in and they didn't ask it a question. They just gave it a keyword. I'm like, it's not a search box. It's a chat. You're, you're literally, you're chatting with a brilliant machine. So ask it questions, ask it intelligent questions, and it will give you intelligent answers. And you, you can be specific. Your question could literally be an entire paragraph. And I, and in the, in the new section that I'm putting in there, I'm putting in there some, some prompts that we've been using, we've been working on. And these prompts are getting a spectacular output. I mean, absolutely spectacular. Like we're asking it, you know, what are the biggest benefits of this product? What are the objections that people might have? How do you overcome those objections? And it's literally answering that stuff for us. And, and it's keeping score. It's keeping track of all the questions you ask. So it's learning what you want along the way. And then you ask it, you know, like four or five questions, gaining all this information. And then you say, based on this, could you write me an article for my website featuring, and then you give it the name of your product, and then it will write it as though it, it knows your product. It's really amazing. The output is an absolutely incredible if you ask it the right sequence of questions. When it outputs it, you can also, one of the, one of the things that I put in there is write it as though I'm a third grader and it will, and, and use common slang. And then what it does is it humanizes it for you. It's taking the machine writing out and it's humanizing it. You can put stuff in there, like, you know, end it off with a, with a little humor and, you know, it'll, it'll actually do that. It's absolutely amazing, the output, but it's based on your questions. So you need to, you need to think about, you know, in the future, I think copywriters are in trouble. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I think what you're going to get is you're going to get a new breed of people that are prompt engineers. They know how to ask the questions to get the right answers and they will be the copywriters of the future. You know, those copywriters are going to be figuring this out. And, you know, they'll probably be good at it because they know the game. They know what to ask. And you're doing all that in Jasper? 
Jasper is one tool. You can do it right straight in chat GPT for free. But Jasper doesn't have the problems of, you know, actually getting access to the tool. And Jasper has a lot of templates where they've pre-templatized the prompts. So they've made it smart for you. They've, they've taken a lot of that learning curve out by, by templatizing it. So Jasper is a great tool. If you're good at the prompts, though, you don't need Jasper. You can just go right to the source and ask the right questions. Hey, John, I have another question. Mm -hmm. um, if in a 30 minute uh, presentation, how many topics uh, do you, is that like four topics? How many? It, it, there is no right answer for that. Yeah. What you're doing, your presentation, it doesn't really matter how long it is either. It could be 30 minutes. It could be an hour. Your, your topics should all be in line with the outcome that you want. Good. Like if you want someone to purchase a product, if that's your goal in, in the presentation, you need to kind of treat it like a court case. <laughs> yeah. this, might, this might sound kind of weird, but you're treating it as a court case and you're trying to get a favorable decision at the end. So what you're doing is you're addressing any objections you're pleading your case for why this is the best. So you're using claim proof benefit. You're three-dimensionalizing objections. You're eliminating or you're three-dimensionalizing benefits and eliminating all objections. So you in, in however many things there are, that's how many things you address. Got it. You know, if there's like <laughs> If there's like three things that you need to do to be successful in X, Y, Z, then there's, there's three things. Now, each one of those three might address several objections. People might have a different objections at different points in the presentation. Mm -hmm. So if you address them in, in the right sequence, everything will be smooth as glass. By the time they get to the end and you make your offer, they're going to have no reason to say no. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. That helps a lot. I appreciate yeah, your time. I, I wish I had a better answer for you, but there isn't. No, one. <laughs> you, you got my, my brain going. So that's what I wanted. I appreciate your time. Cool. Hey, John, hey, John, when you go to GPT now, it tells you to let the, uh, there's a click that says uh, click here. If you want to be notified when we're back up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, if you use it like in the middle of the night, you'll get, you'll probably get in because there's not as many people trying to get access to it in the middle of the night. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Tom, go ahead. Okay. This is a very hypothetical question. <laughs> okay. Kind of a weird question maybe, but uh, <clears throat> suppose somebody came up with a new product or service, be it tangible or intangible, could be anything that is brand new and absolutely nobody is searching for it on Google because it hasn't existed until yesterday or whatever. Okay. Yeah, that, How does SEO that's, play into that picture or does that, it? That's actually not hypothetical at all. That okay. happens a lot. So what you need to do is, again, you're back to your research of the person might not know about your product because they're not at that point in the awareness in the, in the ACT program, there's a thing called the, the pyramid of awareness. And the higher up in the pyramid you get, the more alert they are to the actual product. Like at the base of the period, the base of the pyramid, they're completely unaware of even the problem, right? They're just in the clouds. They have no idea. So if you're addressing that section of the market, you need to first make them aware of the, of the problem. And, and again, if they're not aware of the problem and they're not searching for it, you need to figure out what other common thread that, that this avatar has, and you need to get in front of them that way. Maybe they're just, you know, if they're totally unaware and it's not bothering them and the, you can't find a common thread, you need to figure out, okay, of this avatar, where do they hang out? What do they do? What do they do for fun? And then you intersect them there and search might not be your thing. Search is not, it's not the answer for everything. 
Search is only the answer for people that are searching for something. So that's kind of a that's kind of a, a corollary question I have. Uh, a lot of people are searching for a lot of things, but what do you do about all the people who would buy your product if they knew about it, but they're not searching for it? Well, that that's the thing. That's a whole other conversation, I'm sure. <laughs> it's actually the same one. You either figure out what they're searching for and and bring it in front of them that way. Or you figure out where they're at and bring it to them that way. I'll give you a perfect example. We had a, a, a day spa that we were doing. They came to us for SEO and they were down in San Diego in Point Loma, right across the street from the harbor where all the sport fishing boats are. And, you know, all these yachts, these high end yachts and sport fishers and stuff. And they had the day spa. They were having trouble getting their customers in because they were trying to go in Google search for the local area and no one was searching for their stuff. Nobody was looking for their, their products. It didn't mean that they wouldn't like them, right? So I asked the, I asked the, the owner of the spa, I said, You've, I know you know your customers because they lay on your table for hours at a time and you guys talk, right? What do they like? What do they do? What are their hobbies? What are their interests? And she was, it was really interesting. She said, well, they seem to love wine and cheese. And the other thing they like to do is they like to shop and buy knickknack items for their boats. And I'm like, well, that's where they're hanging out. That's where we need to intersect them. So we started placing ads in local wine and cheese places like online, not necessarily walking into their stores, but online, the local wine and cheese places. And we put their banner ads on those sites. We also put their banner ads in the uh, the stores that, where they buy the stuff for their boats. You know, marine shops, nautical shops. And just by doing that, we completely booked them out and they were, they were plugged their whole, you know, they had no availability. They were they had a waiting list and it was just a simple shift in, in moving the traffic source to where those people were. They were not on Google. That was not working for them. So SEO in that case is a waste of time, a waste of money. Okay. Thank you. Define SEO, please, John. That's search engine optimization. It's it's basically doing stuff to your website that Google will rank you at the top. So it'll send you search traffic, people that search inside of Google and and uh, all the search engines, Bing, Yahoo, any search engine out there, even YouTube. YouTube is a big search engine as well. All right, Mr. Woody. Oh, hey. And and I want to thank you. I got your uh, I got your gift. That's cool. I I figured uh, I'd give you a little steering wheel for something. <laughs> you wanted to make sure I kept on course. <laughs> I I captain. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know we have a team. You know Tammy is working with our uh, wonderful uh, staff. And um, we are doing the ACT program. We are, you know, want to let everyone in. And if anything gurgles up for you, please share with me. Um, but we are, I inherited uh, my dad's record company. And, uh, you know, that is going to be part of my website as a destination to go. You know, mm -hmm. go to Woody for real estate, go to Woody for... Uh, this record company and, you know, go for our training and consulting and anything that has to do with being disabled, that's enough, you know, because it, yeah. it's a bitch being disabled, bro. I got to <laughs> tell you, and there's a lot of us out there whining, bitching, moaning and praying. And I, I want to have space for them to express my world too. But um, so they're finding out the team doing your, your template is uh, researching where people are that are Elvis fans. 
Okay. Uh, and Mad Magazine fans. Um, and um, and so I want to ask you a question because usually people come out of your program and develop a plan, but we already have a product. You know, <laughs> we have the Elvis Presley songs that we wrote two of. You know, one was in a movie, and then we have all of these unreleased demos and we say the story is that the colonel forbade elvis to record this music this is elvis's forbidden <laughs> music and if you get you'll get on our membership site for free but if you want this on you know your upgraded thing you'll get you know one of these forbidden tunes <clears throat> Or something. Yeah, no, that, that's actually a fantastic angle. Because when you have fans like that, even, you know, I don't know how many years Elvis has been gone, but there's still a massive following, a massive community of people that love Elvis. So when you have that kind of thing, and you have that curiosity factor, of this is these are the Elvis songs that no one's ever heard. And you can wrap the story about, you know, they were so controversial that the colonel would not let these hit the public. And you can get access to them through my private membership. That's a really compelling thing that would grab attention. I love the whole Elvis angle. In fact, I'm doing a thing with, uh, with Sue Brooke, and we're doing a big idea that wraps around Elvis and how you can use what turned Elvis from a struggling musician into the king of rock and roll. There was a business shift that he made that actually did that. You know, I don't, most people don't know he was getting nowhere and, and he almost gave up. And it didn't have anything to do with the colonel. It had to do with a simple business shift that he made that literally turned him into the king of rock and roll almost overnight. The colonel saw that and jumped in on it. You know, <laughs> he jumped on the bandwagon because he saw a good thing. But that shift, that shift anybody can do in their own business and virtually get the same result. They can they can create raving fans for their business and turn those raving fans into paying customers. And that's going to be my big idea to grab people's attention of how to use this Elvis shift in their business, you know, to create raving fans and drive them to their, to their site. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a cool angle, <laughs> no matter how you slice it. It's just, it's a cool angle. So I came up with the, uh, with text. I haven't formulated in, into the big idea yet, but I did come up with some, uh, some pretty cool text around it. And uh, let me see if I can find it here and I'll see if I see if I can get it and you guys can see what what I'm doing with that. Let's see. Okay, here. Here we go. John, did you use the chat uh, GPT or whatever? No, this was me. This was all me on this one. Okay, so here it is. The, the headline is the Elvis shift attracts new customers to your business, like raving fans rushing to a rock concert. Discover how the simple shift transformed a struggling musician into the king of rock and roll. Learn how you can use this Elvis shift to create a stampede of raving fans and quickly turn them into loyal customers. So that's so could I take these raving Elvis fans? I mean, there's got to be millions of <laughs> Elvis fans. And then, or, yeah. you know, just send them the message that we've got the forbidden music, you know, the world was not allowed to hear <clears throat> yeah. by that yeah. horrible, horrible <clears throat> colonel. <clears throat> you know, I mean, you can make it mythic. Absolutely. Or I'll least... tell you the easiest way to do this, and this is for anybody, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you can find the person or the influencer or the group or whoever has your customers, 
Like in Woody's case, it's Elvis fans. If you can find an influencer that has gathered up all these Elvis fans, they've already done the heavy lifting for you. You contact that influencer and you say, hey, I have a perfect vehicle for you to use to give your audience something that they absolutely crave that they can't get from anyone else. And you can make a few bucks in the process and you'll be a superhero. They're going to say, hell yeah, what do you got? And then you create an affiliate link for them. You give them an affiliate link to present your product out to their audience. And you will have sales, you know, if you create the right sales presentation, the right offer, you're going to get a boatload of new customers with almost little to no effort on your part. Because your influencer is going to do the, the reach out. They're going to do the email. They're going to get the people excited. They're going to give them the webinar link and they're going to put them on. Or, or even it doesn't even have to be a webinar. It could be a, a presentation that was pre recorded. You know, you could write the script and have an AI audio spit out the, the voice for you. You know, I know you have trouble with your voice. You, you know, you might not want to do the presentation yourself. You could have, you know, a, a, a macho voice or, or a sexy gal voice or, you know, whatever you think is going to appeal to that audience. <laughs> I'll, I'll even rent my voice out to you if you like. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what kind of, what, what kind of referral do you pay on that affiliate link at standard standardly there again, there's no standard to it. There's, it depends if it's a digital thing and there's really no cost to it. A lot of the digital marketers will, will give 50%. That sounds like a lot, but the way I look at it, I'll do that all day long for digital products where I have no cost of, of goods. I have no cost of delivery. It's just going to be like free money in my pocket. So if I don't give the 50%, I don't get the affiliate to promote me. Guess what's in my pocket at the end of the day? Lint. Nothing. Lint. I can't buy much with the lint that's left in my pocket, right? But if I'm generous and I give them 50% and they say, oh, that's cool. I could make some money on this. They're going to drop 50% of that money in my pocket. And it's just like a free windfall. I'll take that all day long. Now, if you're doing a physical product or a service, you know, let's say you're a massage therapist, you don't want to give up 50% of your money because you're doing the work and it's, you know, that's hard work. It might be a lower percentage and that is perfectly okay. Like if you go and you become an Amazon affiliate, I think, you know, a lot of their stuff is like 5% or less, you know, but if you sell, you know, thousand dollar TV sets, you know, they're on Black Friday special and you have an audience and you can move a bunch of them, you know, you can put a few bucks in your pocket. So it just, it just totally depends. There's no, that's another one that there's no right or wrong. I know as a product creator, I create digital products to sell to people. And I'm always thinking about what kind of an offer can I create that would be very attractive for affiliates because I want the affiliates to do all the work. You know, I, I don't want to go and create ads and buy traffic and, and do all this stuff. I want to find some key players that are going to go promote it and dump money in my pocket. So I'm always thinking about how can I leverage it for them and, and let them make the lion's share of it. Like I'll even create like front end. A lot of times, <clears throat> like the ACT program is a perfect example. You know, it's it's 1997. It's $2,000 on the front end. On the back end's only 29 bucks a month. The affiliate couldn't care less about that. They want the rev share off the front end cut. So in many cases, I'll tell them, hey, I'll give you 50% of the upfront. You can make $1,000 a sale. And there's no back end, you know, or I'll tell them, hey, I'll give you 75% up front. You know, you can make 1500 a sale. I'll make five and, you know, I'll take the back end. And they're all over that. 
they don't care about, you know, 50% of 30 bucks. They want 50% of 2000. You know, I also let them give their audience a special deal. I say the front end, I really don't care. I don't care how much I make on the front end. So if you want to give your audience a special deal, we can give them a thousand dollars off. And you still make 50%. I'll give you 50%. You tell me how much you want to make. You know, if you want to make 250 bucks a sale, we can discount $1,500 off the sale price. We can knock it down to 497. If you're good with 250 a sale, I'm good with it. Let's do it. You know, if they say, I want to give it to my audience for, for 497, but I need more, I want, I want 75%. I'll say, okay. When would you like to schedule? Because <laughs> again, I don't care about how much I make off the front end. It's just free money dropped in my pocket. So that's you, you need to start looking through eyes of abundance instead of eyes of scarcity. People that, that are, are, you know, they don't want to let go of a nickel. That that's, that is just going to ooze out of them and nobody's going to want to work with them. You've got to be, you've got to make it a win for people. If you let people win, they'll want to work with you again and again and again, and they will refer you over and over and over. So, and, and, you know, as long as it's a digital thing and it's, there's no cost, there's no delivery issues, it's scalable. Why not? That's what I do. That's what I look to create. I look to create products that match that criteria so I can set up, I can put myself in the middle of that scenario of being generous and giving them all, you know, give them the world. What more could they want? Right. I've even done deals where I give them a hundred percent of the front end. Right. People will say, well, you're crazy. I'm like, Maybe, <laughs> maybe I am, but I'm not having any trouble putting fuel in my boat. <laughs> yeah, crazy wealthy. <laughs> so, it's just the way you look at things. How do you become an affiliate of your program? You just go to the internet dominators.com, go to the bottom and click the become an affiliate link. It's I make it pretty easy. All right, Helen. Is it Helen or Helene? It's Helene. <laughs> Helene. Okay, got it. It's a French name. John, I made the stupid mistake, uh, and Google has blocked me for it. And you're talking about SEO. I want to be unblocked. And where do you find help from mm -hmm. Google? Because it's almost impossible to find. Yeah, and they're really not in business to help you especially on SEO. There is no technical support for SEO. They have a PR machine and you got to be careful of this. If you're, if you're new to search engine optimization, Google has a full PR machine that makes it seem like they're helping you. But I would be very, very cautious of what they tell you to do because... Well in their terms of service, they say, if you try and manipulate our results, we'll ban you. And well, then on that's, that's what's happened is like my business is listed under my private email instead of my business email. And this is why they have blocked my business. And, okay. just, and I tried to get my business numbers so I could answer them. And unfortunately, they've also blocked my business number. So essentially, I'm up a creek with us. <laughs> and this is this is in you're talking about Google My Business page, right? Yes. Uh -huh. the, the, the private or the yes. the business listing. Yes. <laughs> so, is uh, the business? What's the address of the business listing? Is it a a home or a PO box or it's something? My home. Okay. So they may have decided and they usually don't do this because I use my home as my business address too. That's my, that's my headquarters, but there's a number of places where that's published publicly. So there's no dispute over it. 
typically what they'll do is they will block you if there's a disputed information. Like if you've got public information and directories and things that is giving conflicting information, all of a sudden they don't trust it and they can wind up not trusting any of it. So what you might need to do is you might need to get your, they, they call them citations. Citation is an instance of your name, address, and phone number out on the internet. Could be in a directory listing. It could be, you know, any number of sources where these could live. And what you need to do is you need to go to Google and, and see what Google thinks your business name is, what your business address is, your phone number, exactly. Like if it's Avenue versus AVE, whatever they think, you should take it as gospel. And then go out and adjust all those citations to match what they say it is. And then you can rebuild that trust with them. Uh, my problem is that when when I look at the address, like under my email, I've got my business listed, you know, like my little picture of a business. And mm -hmm. under under my Gmail for my business, it's not there, obviously. I need to move these this little address away from where my email is to where where the business email is and and like finding somebody who could do this is like <laughs> yeah that's that's basically it's called local seo local optimization yeah uh, i can put you in contact with some people that do that if you want oh, that would be wonderful yeah i don't amazing. i don't mess with that stuff anymore i used to do it a long time ago but uh, I, I know people that, that can do that. So, uh, okay. So how do I, is it, you know, my email and, and uh, please, please, please email me. The, yeah. Uh, well, email me, email me to remind me or, or send me a message in alignable either way. Okay. And then I'll, I'll send it. I'll make the connection for you. Okay. Thank you very, very much. I think you're a lifesaver in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. All right, so you guys want to see my webinar scheme, my scenario here? All right. Yes. Let's do that. Let me get that up. We'll I'll give you kind of a, a quick rundown of Kartra and the, the many things that it does. It's an awesome program. So let me share my screen. Okay, so... Let me let me show you the front end first before I pull back end of this thing. So this is this is the page, and I'm doing this with uh, with Tommy, an alignable, on alignable, and kind of the big idea. This this might be somewhat of a weak big idea here. It's not quite as good as the. the Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> we lost John. I've been hearing that Zoom has John, you're problems muted. when screen share. John, you're muted. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. Zoom has been creating some issues, especially when you go to screen share. So I'm going to try it again here. We'll see if it works. Let's see. Okay. Are you guys seeing my screen here now? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Cool. All right. So this is this is Tommy. He's from Alignable. He's the one I'm doing this webinar with next week. And so I put this page up, and this is actually the not the right page. This is the replay page. So let me get these in order. Let me figure out the order. Okay. So here's the first one. This is grab your spot. This is a webinar registration page that I built inside a car trip. So the big idea here is you're four steps away from predictable income. Just one successful marketing campaign can change your life forever. 
obviously what we're selling here is we're going to be presenting the ACT program and making the offer for it on the end. So we've got the countdown timer here. Grab your spot now. Stop struggling. This is your chance to build the business of your dreams. Transform your life forever. Now, when they click on that, the other thing here, I've got the, the four things that they're actually going to learn over here. So we're not just saying, hey, there's there are four steps. Here we're saying, find out how ad agencies thrive while the rest of us struggle. This webinar will reveal how to use these four steps to create a marketing campaign that will grow your business fast. Who wants to grow their business slow, right? They want it fast. And then we list the four things. There's still some curiosity here to these four things. Like most people don't know what a big idea formula is. Most people don't know how to seduce the hearts of their prospects, but that's what they're going to learn if they show up. So I'm creating a lot of a lot of demand and desire here by telling them what they're going to get. And this is all stuff that they want. I mean, who doesn't want to grab attention and attract prospects? That is what they desire. They desire that so they can create demand and desire for their product, right? They, 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 know, they know they have to eliminate objections, so I'm giving them the formula for that. And then an irresistible offer to convert prospects into paying customers. So this is like, in a nutshell, this is everything they dream about. This is the stuff that keeps them up at night. They're like, wow, if I could only figure out how to get prospects, I could make sales and I wouldn't be, you know, wondering if I can cover my payroll. You know, that's the kind of things that's going through their head at night. I know that and that's why I'm keying in on it. So anyway, sign me up. They click that, it opens up a Kartra free webinar registration, the four steps to predictable income. They put their name, email address in there, hit the button, sign me up. And now it's going to take them to the registration, the thank you for registering page. Again, I'm saying, here's what you're going to learn. Don't miss it. Countdown timer. There's the actual link to join the webinar. Now, I know this thing is still six days away, and they're probably not going to keep this page up for six days, so I follow up with an automated email. There's an automated email. I'm going to go right into their email box when they, when they do this, and if we click the email, we'll see if it comes in. We'll see if the magic actually happens here. All right. Get messages. All right. I got to download all my mail here to see if we got it, but you can imagine I get a little bit of mail every day. <laughs> okay. Thank you for registering. So this email was sent by the system. And again, it's just saying, thank you for registering for the webinar. You will learn the four steps to create a marketing campaign that will grow your business fast. The content here is all consistent. It's, it's saying the same thing over and over and over. Mark your calendar. There's the link. So now they've got an email that's, that they can go. They can save this email and they can go and they can put that on their calendar or whatever. I also address the first thing that's going to create questions. Instead of my email box being loaded up with a bunch of questions of, will you record this? I can't make the date. I can't make the time. Can I watch the replay? So I put right in here, if you miss the live webinar, don't worry. We will record it and put it up on this page for you. So I'm actually giving them the address where it's going to be. So later on, they can just go there. I don't have to follow up with them. I'm taking care of the whole thing here in one shot, one email. Okay, so then, okay, so that's the don't miss it. Then we have the replay page. So this is a webinar replay page waiting. The webinar is not done yet, so it's just a dummy 
placeholder. After the webinar is done, I'll load the image or load the video up in here, and then this will be live, and it'll be evergreen forever. The other thing that I got going here is this timer. When this thing hits zero, it's going to automatically forward them to this page. I don't want somebody just going here and watching the video that didn't register to watch the webinar, right? So if they miss this and this goes to zero and they can't, they can't do it, or I'm getting these all mixed up here. If this one goes to zero and they haven't signed up yet, they get, they get forwarded here. So watch the replay now, sign me up. Same thing, it's going to get them to do the free webinar replay. So now I know if they signed up before, they're going to be tagged. If they sign up for the replay, they're going to be tagged. So I'll know exactly how they got here. So those are my front end pages. And then after the fact, we're going to send them to, like after they watch this replay, at the end, I'll have a link that shows up down here that they could actually go to. And this page has not been put up yet, but let's see. Let's see if I've got the page. I'm going to have to find the page for you. So in Kartra, here's our four pages. So we have the we have the initial page here, the webinar sign up, and then we've got the thank you page. Then we've got the replay page, and then we've got the one where this will forward to this one if they come in late after this thing's already done. Like if Tommy promotes it, he sends email out, and they come to sign up to register, and the thing has already taken place. They'll just go to the watch the replay and they'll register there. So that will uh, that will solve that. And then we're going to send them to this page, which is order. And here we're talking about, again, predictable way to get more customers, get ad agency results using the ACT method. Even if you have no budget or technical skills. So I'm addressing a major objection right up front. Then I say, finally proven success, yours to model, which I'm telling them all I have to do is model this and it's going to work, right? And notice the, the action verbs here, creates online funnels that sell like crazy, attracts high profit customers. I'm not telling them what it is. I'm telling them what it does. Remember, this is a distinction between features and benefits. I'm not telling them, hey, it's a workbook, it's a program, it's a it's an online thing. I'm not telling them any of that. I'm telling them what it does. I'm focused 100% on the benefits. Predictably grows your business fast. These are all action things. These are what it does. This is how it delivers its result. And the the act method this is the unique mechanism. This is what the unique mechanism does. This is the thing that delivers the results. The promise is get ad agency results. So if you're if you're wrapping that into a big idea, there's the promise, the unique delivery mechanism, and then I'm putting it into what it does. So there's this curiosity factor of what, what the heck is an ACT method? And then we, you know, we go in here. And if you notice, when we go down, all the way down, we've got bonuses. This is all the components of an irresistible offer. So we put in here regularly, 1997. We're going to sell it to his audience for 497. Then just 29.97 a month for full support and mentorship. So anybody that buys this will become part of our program. Now, the other thing, it's kind of, this page goes on, but this is just a preview, so it's not going to show us the whole thing. But here's the guarantee. 
I created a unique guarantee here called the shark bite guarantee. It's kind of similar. I saw somebody at one point, they did a, a guarantee that was the dog ate it. You know, if for any reason you're not completely satisfied with a product, just call our, you know, call our office and tell us the dog ate it. No questions asked. We'll just refund your money hundred percent. So I thought that was cool. I'm into boats and ocean and fishing. So I'm like, I'm going to do the shark bite guarantee. Same thing, full 30 day, no questions asked, 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, just call us and shoot us an email and tell us the shark bit it. 100% money back guarantee. So that's, that's going to be the actual order page that we send them to to purchase the product after the webinar. So that is that. And how long is that guarantee for? By the 30, way, 30 days, 30 day money back guarantee. That is also connected to the affiliate. I don't pay the affiliates out a hundred percent for 30 days in case I get, you know, refund. And it's, it's interesting. I've been selling this program for like 10 years and I think I've refunded one. I think I've had one person and they had a death in the family and they were close. They just decided they were going to close their business. It was like a wife bought it to do the work for the husband's business. And then he passed away and, and she called and she told me the story and I'm like, Hey, you know, no problem. You, you didn't have to go into all that. I appreciate it. I feel for you, but all you had to do is tell me the shark bit it. <laughs> but but yeah, that, that was really the only time I've actually had to give a guarantee refund on that particular product. So, okay. So the other thing about this, here's the forms. So I'll show you how this, how this works. So we've got a replay registration form. We've also got the regular web, webinar registration form. So I'm going to go in to edit that so I can show you the pieces to the puzzle here. And this is all Kartra. What you're seeing back here is all the Kartra back end. A little earlier, I was talking about analytics. So you can see the analytics for any form. So first off, we've got form fields. So this is where I'm only asking for name and email. And I'm putting a, a disclaimer on there, a privacy policy disclaimer. So under the... The next one I'm saying on the success page, when somebody fills out the form, send them to the webinar thank you page. TY stands for thank you in, in my universe. And then here, here's the welcome message. So this is the email that you saw that showed up in my email box. Thank you for registering. Details and close. That's the subject. And then there's the email. It, this is how it plugs in their first name. Like you notice, it was personalized. It said, hi, John. You know, thank you for registering for the webinar. All right. So that is the email. I'm going to save that. Now, the next thing, next tab is automations. This is where you can add tags. You can subscribe this person to a list. So I'm putting them on a list. When somebody opts in for that, they go on my Internet Dominators list with the tag ACT Webinar Registration. So later on, I can look at my list and I can say, okay, there was a thousand people at some. John, we lost you. Sorry about that. I got kicked out again, apparently. It was good stuff. Hope you can get back in. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I don't know where it kicked out. I didn't notice where it kicked out. Was, uh, was Later any... on, you can, and you were discussing the tags. Okay, so, so later on, I can say, okay, there was a 1,000 people registered for this webinar, and only 250 purchased the product. So I can go back, and I can, I can do an email blast, and I can put the criteria that I want to send out to anyone that registered for the webinar, the ACT webinar registration, anyone that has that tag and also has not purchased the ACT program. 
I don't want to send it out to people it purchased, right? Because I'm sending out possibly a special discounted email. So what I might do, I might follow up with these people in three weeks and say, hey, you know, I noticed that you didn't, you didn't purchase the ACT program. Here's some of the results from some of the people that have gone through the program, you know, and I'm assuming that you didn't purchase it based on the price. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm making an assumption here. And what we've decided to do that anybody that didn't take advantage of it, we're going to do a, and you can call it, you know, an economic stimulus discount. You know, because you probably didn't get it for the money, we're going to cut it in half. So instead of the $19.97, you were offered it for $4.97. Now we're going to give it to you for $2.47. Anybody that wants to get in on it, if money was the issue, we really don't want money to be the object here. We want you to get the results. And I'm going to send them an email to that effect. I don't want that email to go to somebody that purchased for $4.97. Because what's going to happen, they're going to send me an email and they're going to either be mad at me, which I don't want anybody mad at me, or they're going to request the $250 discount. Now I'm going to have to give good money back to a, a previous sale, which if, if that were the case, I would do it in a second. I would not argue that at all. I would just give them the discount. I'd refund them the, the difference. but if I can prevent that, I'd like to do that, right? So this gives me a way to do that. I can identify the tag of who signed up. I can also identify the tag of who purchased. So I can exclude the purchasers, include the, the webinar registrants. So that's a really cool feature there. The other thing that you can do here is you can do advanced automations. And what this is, it's the same kind of thing. Like if somebody purchases the product, I can add a tag to them that says act purchase. So now I've got that tag. So later on, I can filter them. I can also, if I've got them in a sequence, which I'm going to show you the sequences in a minute, but if they're in a sequence, like a follow-up sequence, and they've already purchased, I don't want the sequence to continue. I don't want to continue pestering them because they've already purchased. So I'm going to remove them from the sequence. And then I might add them to another sequence. Like somebody that purchases, I want them to go into a fulfillment sequence that now will help them consume the product. Make sure that their first 30 days is spectacular so they don't ask for a refund. Because remember, I'm telling them their first 30 days, if they're not absolutely satisfied, I want to make sure that I fulfill on that. So that is cool. And then the next thing is the form design. And I just put this as, as use it in a Kartra page. So I didn't have to deal with form design. It's just dropped into a page on Kartra. And basically, that's it. That's how you, That's how simple it is to build the forms. Now, I know you might be saying, hey, that didn't look very simple. <laughs> but if you're seeing it for the first time, I agree with you. I thought the same thing. But after I played around with this thing for a while, I've been using this for probably four or five years. My Almost my entire online business runs on this. The only thing that doesn't run inside Kartra is my hosting business and my web development business. Those run on a separate platform that's got a different billing system. But this thing does the products, it does the billing, it does the recurring billing, it does my membership sites, it handles videos, calendars, surveys, help desks, um, pages, it'll build pages. The communications, this is where you can do the sequences, the automated follow-up sequences. So you'll notice here's leads. And remember, I was talking about my AI book. This is somebody that downloaded the AI book. You know, they're on one list. They have one tag. So I know they just came in and they just got the AI book. They didn't go any further in my process yet. And this is new. These are, these are in order. You know, these just came in today. Like here is, here's actually somebody that just registered for the, for Tommy's webinar. So that's awesome. 
Here's my conversion maximizer book. These are all free lead magnets. I, I was telling you guys, this is how I generate leads. I offer free stuff up on my website and it generates leads and they drop in here. And I can follow up with them based on what they did. Here's, uh, here's a free consult. You know, here's another AI book. The AI book is very popular right now. So that that tells me I should probably build a digital product around AI. I could probably sell a membership really easily. AI tutorials. So I'm learning from my audience what they want. This is pretty relevant stuff here. Majority of the new opt-ins are all about the AI. So that's pretty cool. Now, under communication, under the communication tab, this is where I can send out broadcasts. This is where I can say, you know, send it to people with this tag that didn't buy yet or people that, that are don't send it to the ones that have already purchased. I can set a, a bunch of different criteria of who I want to, dis, to get this email. Now, sequences. We talked about sequences. Oh, I've apparently got this open somewhere else. So let me go back here. All right, here, I've got it open on this tab. So sequences, I've created two different sequences. One sequence is if they come in and they register for the live webinar. There's a follow-up sequence to make sure they show up. I have another sequence for the replay, for the people that, that came in after the fact and, and they didn't register for the live, they came in for the replay. So it's a different follow-up sequence. So I'm going to show you what the what this actually looks like. And you can see all the automation and stuff behind the scenes that's going on for this simple campaign. So under starting rules here, the starting rules to start the sequence says opt in, a lead fills out the act webinar registration for Tommy. So if somebody fills out that form, the sequence is going to fire. It's going to automatically start. So that's my starting rule. Now, on January 23rd, this campaign is going to run till January 25th. The live webinar is next Wednesday on the 25th. So anybody from here through the weekend that signs up for this thing on Monday at 9 a.m., the reason I did Monday at 9 a.m., is because people that are in business, oftentimes they don't check their email over the weekend. They come in Monday morning, and the first thing they do is they flush their email box. I don't want to get flushed. So I'll let them flush it first. And then when their email box is nice and clean, I'm going to drop this thing in at 9 a.m. So it's going to be right top, front, and center. And it's a webinar reminder. This is basically going to tell them that it says, hey, and this is the subject line, hey, and I've personalized it. So this would say, hey, John, just reminding you about Wednesday. Now they're going to go, what the, what, what's Wednesday? So they're going to click it to open the email, right? They're going to click that thing. The email is going to open up and it's going to remind them your webinar is this Wednesday. Make sure you don't miss the webinar. This is going to be a game changer for your business. Again, I'm giving them the benefits and giving them the link again. Here's the link to attend live. There's the date. So I'm giving them a personal email. Okay. So that is Monday morning at 9 a.m. They're going to receive that. Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. They're going to receive another one, a very similar one. The only difference is this one says, don't forget, John, your webinar is tomorrow. Again, very personalized. They might not click on that one because they already got the point, but then I'm going to send them another one. And this one's on the day of. And this one's going to say, hey, John, webinar starting soon. And they click it, click in, watch the webinar. Now, the next day, this is on. Thursday. Webinar happened on Wednesday. Webinar replay now. 
So I'm going to send them all. And all this is all completely automated. I tell it when and where and what to do, and it's just going to do it. So anybody that fills that form out, signs up, this sequence fires, it's all completely automated. Then I say, hey, John, the webinar was outstanding. Replay and closed. Again, that's a click factor. Replay and closed. Whenever you put in your subject lines, video and closed, link and closed, photo included. They're like, what is it? What is it? They have to click it to see it. So that's how I'm going to get them to open my emails. And again, this one, you know, it's the same thing. It's formatted. It's got my company name at the top. Your replay, or your webinar replay is now available. The webinar was awesome. People are raving about it. I'm giving them a reason to want to watch it here. You know, we covered in depth the four steps to creating a marketing campaign that will grow your business fast. Here's the link to the replay. Boom. They're on it. The, re the, the webinar does its job, makes the offer, gives them the link, sends them to the sales page, and they make the, they make the purchase. So pretty cool stuff. And this thing could go on forever. You could send them, you know, this, this could go on for the next two weeks if you wanted to. So that is, that's if they signed up live. Now, if they signed up on the replay, I've got a similar sequence, but it's a little different. I know the live is out of the picture. We're, we're not concerned with that. The webinar is over. I'm not prompting them at all to see a live webinar. I'm not trying to make it look like it's live. I'm not trying to do, I'm evergreening it, but not in a way where it's, they're going to think, oh, this, this guy's a liar. I don't want to come through like that. So here, the starting rules, again, I have two starting rules here. So I have one starting rule. And this is the opt-in form. A lead fills out ACT webinar replay registration. So they've registered to see the replay. So that is one trigger that can fire the sequence. I have another trigger that can also fire the sequence. And this is lead visits a page. They actually visit the replay page. So the reason I did this was let's say somebody signs up for the, the webinar registration live and let's say they watched it live. If they watched it live, they're going to get the replay link. If they click the replay link and they go to that replay page, I'm going to have a tag on them and it's going to fire the sequence. And the reason I want to do that is now I've set up a timer and I've got the replay available. And then I'm putting a special limited time offer. You know how we discounted it from 1997 down to 497? Well, that discounts only for 72 hours. Then it goes up to the 1997. So I'm creating a sense of urgency. So in here, this happens. Notice the last ones, it fired on a date. Like it was Monday, 9 a.m., Tuesday, 9 a.m. This one is based on time. This is one hour after they land on that page. So whether they sign up, then whether they do the opt-in <clears throat> or they land on the page, either one triggers the sequence. And one hour later, they're going to get this email. So this email says, Hey, John, the webinar was outstanding, replay and closed. So again, I'm just giving them a link back to it in case they landed on the page or they signed up and they didn't complete it. So again, the webinar replay is now available. Webinar was awesome. People are raving about it. So that goes out. It's kind of like the same one that was at the end of the other sequence. But then <clears throat> this is going to go one day, exactly 24 hours after this one goes. They're going to get this email. This email is make sure you open this, John. 
it won't last long. Link enclosed. So again, I'm doing the curiosity factor. And on this one, when they open it, they're going to say webinar replay and special offer. We never talked about a special offer. So now if they didn't click on it just to watch the replay, now they've, I've given them another reason to click on it, another reason to go watch the replay. And I say the webinar replay, the webinar and replay are awesome. But even better is the limited time offer. So now again, I'm throwing curiosity. They're going, what's the offer? At the end of the webinar, there is an offer to the program, which has literally made my business bulletproof. So again, a lot of curiosity here. I'm not giving specifics. I'm giving them reason to go watch this webinar. <clears throat> so that's number two. Again, one day later, limited time offer. This is a very similar email. It's just limited time offer ending soon. So it says, and now I'm starting with their name. John, the offer is ending soon. Check the countdown timer. And they're going, like, holy shit, there's a countdown timer. <laughs> so I'm giving them even further reason to click in if they haven't done it yet. And then finally, we've got the last one here, which is the last chance email. And here, last chance, John, click the link in closed or miss the boat. So I'm getting, as I go, I'm getting a little more aggressive each time. And if you think about this, this is a lot of stuff going on that I only had to do once, and I am never going to have to do this again. Anybody that signs up for this from today to the end of time, this machine is going to do the work for me. It's going to automate my marketing. I had to do the marketing to begin with. I had to do the creation. I had to figure out the audience. I had to build the product. I had to do all that work. You know, and I, I always talk about how lazy I am. <laughs> well, I will spend a lot of time and effort. This is not lazy on my part to build the mousetrap. But you can be damn sure that I'm going to do it. So I only have to do it once. And then I can go about my laziness <laughs> and cut this thing loose. Now, all I have to do once this is up and running, now all I have to do is go help Tommy promote this. I can give him ideas, who, who to contact, what influencers to go leverage, and he can make money by driving traffic to this webinar. So he gets half the money. I'm perfectly happy with that. I've given him a vehicle to do that. I can also take this thing and I can clone this entire thing to anyone. Like if anyone else wants to promote the ACT program, I could do a webinar with them, just clone this whole system, change a couple of things in the emails, and we got a whole marketing sequence ready to go. The other thing that's really cool, I'm going to get out of the out of the sequences here. The other thing that's really cool about Kartra is over here under campaigns, I could create a campaign that basically clones that entire process, all of the pages, all of the opt-in boxes, all of the sequences, all of the automations. I can bundle that up into a campaign and anybody that purchases Kartra through my affiliate link, I can import that campaign right into their Kartra. One click, it unravels, and you've got the whole campaign right inside your Kartra account. So, like this is one, 27 assets. There's 27 pieces to this campaign. And I can import that right in. I could take the, the campaign that I just created and I could bundle it into a campaign and I could import that right into your account. You know, here's one. This was a simple one, attention grabbing icons. You know, there's only one asset. You know, it's a it's a opt-in box and a and a page. It's a it's basically a lead generator. <clears throat> here's a 
Here's one with five assets, a webinar. This is a real basic one. Here's a membership site. If you want to sell a membership site and you want to use Kartra to do it, I've created a template. There's 13 assets. It's got all the stuff that you need to run a membership site. You could literally import this campaign right into your Kartra account and be in business tomorrow. So it's pretty cool stuff. You know, you I know some of you guys have heard me talk about Kartra throughout the throughout the years and not known what it is. There, there it is. There's kind of a look under the hood. It's how I automate all of my marketing campaigns. All my digital businesses are, with the exception of my hosting business and my web development, that runs on a different system. But all my other stuff runs inside Kartra. All of my training programs, all of my live events, all everything. And it's all so easy to automate. And it's so easy to clone. Like once you clone a campaign or once you create a campaign, you can literally clone it and change the stuff out. The first one's going to be hard, you know, unless you get one of my templates and you just load it up and you're ready to go. Um, that's easy. I've kind of taken taken that out of the out of the program for you and made it a no-brainer. But once you get a campaign up and running, you can literally clone it. If you have a different audience and you want to sell the same thing to a different audience, you have a different avatar, you just clone the campaign, make the simple tweaks and changes, and now you've got the whole thing, the whole system running, and you just duplicated it. So if you were making, you know, $10,000 a year off of one campaign, and now you have a new avatar and you clone it, now you can make 20,000 a year. You know, if you've got 100,000 a year, you can clone it and make 200. It's all just simple math. The more doorways you have to purchase your products, the more money you're going to make. And that's basically segments. That's avatars. You if, if you try and sell to everybody the same way, you'll probably wind up selling to nobody. But if you take the time and you do this right, you follow the steps, you do it in sequence, you segment your, your audiences, you segment your markets, you segment out the avatars, you figure out which one's the most profitable, you build a campaign to sell to them. If you can't make money selling to the most profitable segment, that oh. tells me you should move on. You shouldn't waste any time whatsoever in that business. If you can't make money selling to the most profitable segment of that business, it's not the right business. You're going to have a long, painful journey. So that's why I say do that one first. If you're successful there, now you got something. You've got a sliver of gold. Now let's magnify it. Let's duplicate it. <clears throat> and now it's time to move on. You've got that section of the market making you money. So clone it, adjust it, and now hit another section of the market. Make more money, make more money, make more money. So you can do it that way, or you can spin your wheels. I see so many people spinning their wheels. They're going all different directions. They're trying to sell to everybody, and they literally wind up selling to nobody. And it's, you know, that's no way to go through life. That's no way to, to run a business. So, all right, let's go back to questions. Roger. You... Hey, John. Yeah. So your webinar is coming up here in, at that time, the countdown clock showed six days away. And that's my question. Correct. Somebody gets to the landing page and they read the benefits and they go, I'm excited. You had the option to record a webinar. You could do it this afternoon and post it and they could watch an evergreen now. Like if, let's say they got there tomorrow, it's five days away. Correct. They could be watching a webinar within, you know, 10 minutes of getting on your landing page, but you're making them wait five extra days. Correct. What is the limit to how long you'll make them wait for live in your view before you think that the 
urgency in their mind dissipates. Okay, so here, here's the deal with this. Typically, I wouldn't make them wait at all. Typically, if it were just me, I wouldn't do the live webinar. Personally, I would pre-record it. I would create the marketing campaign and cut it loose. The only reason I'm doing a live one here is because this is for somebody else's audience and I'm going to let them introduce me. I'm going to let them take their authority over their audience and transfer it to me. That's a really important piece. That's the only reason that we're doing it live. <clears throat> I told Tommy, I said, if no one shows up to the live webinar, don't worry about it. We have to do it anyway. It's not that big a deal for me to add the front sequence for it. Once I did the front sequence, I literally duplicated it for the replay sequence. So the first one took me the longest. The duplication to do the replay was nothing. It was a couple clicks of a button and changing a couple emails. So literally after Wednesday, after next Wednesday, six days from now, when we do the live thing, that will be gone forever. Now, anyone that comes through from that point forward, which will probably be 99% of his opportunity will come after the fact, it will go right to the replay and they will watch it right there. So we won't make them wait at all. Okay, so a, a slight follow-up on this. <clears throat> I was under the impression that you were making them wait because live is so much more uh, engaging for the audience. They prefer the live. And so you expected to convert more from the live. And your response was, I wouldn't do the live. I mean, except for this unusual circumstance, right? You yeah. you think evergreens convert as well as live? Yes. And, and the reason I say that is because when I do a live webinar, like I've got, I've got promoters that they can put a hundred people on a webinar for me and we'll make probably maybe 10 sales off a live webinar with a hundred people on it. But when we do the follow-up, when we send the replay out and we promote the replay over the following week, you know, the, there's 100 people that showed up on the live when 500 of them registered. So in the promotion over the following week to the 500, instead of 10 sales, you know, we'll probably have 50, 60, 70 sales. So the fact that the replay doesn't convert as well is not true. What converts really well is the limited time offers. Like as those emails go out and the sequence goes out and it keeps reminding them and they see the countdown timer for the limited offer starting to disappear, that's when the majority of the sales will come through. Because there'll be a lot of people that will watch the webinar and want the product and just not buy it now because you didn't give them a reason to. The reason is, hey, the, the special deal is expiring. You're going to lose $1,500 of value here if you don't order this thing by the time the, the countdown timer expires. So that's where the real value comes in, in, in that sense of urgency. So like when I talk about creating irresistible offers, there's one of the components is the sense of urgency. You have to have a reason of why why now. You know, I'm not quite ready now. I'll be ready for this next month. So why now? Well, you're going to save $1,500 if you do it now. That's a pretty good reason. You know, is it, if, if you're going to need it next month, you are you know you're going to need it. You're going to want it. Is it worth doing it now to save $1,500? The answer is probably, yeah. So if I didn't have that, what would happen is, they would say, yeah, I'll get it next month. And then next, by the time next month comes around, they've been hit with 50,000 other offers and you're way off the top of mind. Chances of you making that sale a month from now, pretty slim. Even though it's still a great product, they still need it. They still want it. It's just off their radar. Someone else is now on their radar. You gave way to someone else. You basically took your perfect ideal prospect and handed it off. 
He said, yep, yeah, you can have them. <laughs> Thank you, John. Absolutely. All right. Anybody else? <laughs> All right, guys. I know we've I've probably beat you up now for two hours. Allie, you had something? Yeah, this maybe is for next week because it's you did such a great presentation. But what about the folks that are uh, pre Kartra? Like, if you are building, and do, do you have any recommendations if you uh, are not yet ready to start with Kartra? Remember oh, sure. The days wait, roll back, yeah. and remember pre Kartra days. Oh, do you yeah, have any yeah. Recommendations on what to use now? Absolutely. I mean, you can have you can get a basic autoresponder from. Uh, like a Weber or MailChimp or anything like that, where you can put an opt-in box and you can start generating leads and, you know, and just sending out emails by hand. There's, there's no, you know, if you're just getting started and you're not ready to automate things yet, there's no shame in that. None whatsoever. The thing is, if, if you're gonna, if you really plan on growing a business I, I really don't like spinning my wheels. I don't like having to do things multiple times over and over. If there's anything at all that I can automate, I will automate it right from the get-go. So if, if it's a business that you know you're going to be in and, and you, you, know, you, you know you're going to build this and you're serious about it, you should just go right into the car trend and build the thing and let it fly. There's really no reason to put it off, um, you know, unless unless you're you're bootstrapping up and you literally just don't have the money to get it off the ground. <coughs> and, uh, you know, you can you can do it that way. So and again, there's there's no shame in that whatsoever. But anybody that is is running a business and already has income generated like let's say you're in business already and you've got a website and you want to do online marketing and you you know you you want to do this you don't want to create a job for yourself <clears throat> can you imagine if i put you know even even 50 even 50 new prospects in my in my business and i didn't have a way to automate the follow up with them can you imagine what that would do to me having to to keep track of them all and having to email them all individually. And it's like, I, that, that's a job. I've went nothing to do with that. <laughs> if you, if you told me that was my job for the rest of my life, I don't think I could get out of bed in the morning. The day, the day would not look very exciting to me. <laughs> I want to automate that stuff and let that, let that horsepower, you know, drive me through the day. And know that it's scalable. You know, maybe I put 50 in today. Maybe I put 50 in tomorrow. You know, maybe I put a thousand in next week. I don't want to have to follow up with that. I want to have created the machine, know that it's working, and then scale it up. You know, and then go play on my boat while the thing makes me money. That's what I want to do. So, cool stuff. I love that. One more thing for um, people that are going to jump into Kartra with you because you're so awesome and you give so much value. Um, what 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 do you recommend? Like, do you have people that could help them set the Kartra backends up and all these things? Because you know, it can be a little. There's a learning curve. So, like, you're going <clears> to <throat> help yeah. another gal get connected. Do you have recommendations on on that kind of thing, John? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, there's there's Tammy in our group. She's helping Woody right now set his up. Um, that's another opportunity for any of you that are in the group that you want to learn how to do this stuff, not necessarily for yourself, but as a service provider. You could you could create a great job for yourself. Again, keep in mind it's manual labor. It's not the kind of job I typically like or the type of business that I typically like <clears throat> but if you could get good at something like let's say you master Kartra and you master funnel building and you master the the marketing the act program and you put a team together of outsourcers and you train them and you 
stay on top of them. You could literally offer marketing services to businesses that would pay you upwards of tens of thousands of dollars. You know, there are businesses out there paying ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to have these automated funnels put in play for them because they don't know how to do it and they don't want to. They're making money. <clears throat> you know, there's businesses out there making multi millions of dollars a year. And if you can show them, hey, I can put a marketing campaign together for you that will autom it'll be all automated and it's just going to grow your business. It's going to make you more money. They'll throw twenty, thirty thousand dollars at a, a new channel to expand their business. You know, again, that's it's like if you're if you're thinking on the low end and you're thinking, oh, I don't know anybody that that would pay that much, or I don't know, I don't think people do that you know, you're wrong. There's all level of opportunities out there for almost anything. Again, it's not my cup of tea. I wouldn't want to start a business where it was going to be, you know, it was just going to engulf me in doing manual labor. <clears throat> but if that is what you want to do, like if you're in a day job and you're doing this stuff for somebody else and and you want to do it for yourself and just get rid of the boss and, and be busy, there's a lot of work in this arena. There's a ton of, uh, at all levels, you know, there's people like even down on, on the lower level that, you know, they can't afford 20 or 30 grand for a marketing funnel, but they can afford to go through ACT and figure out their messaging and then connect with somebody that could help them you know, do the, the mechanical stuff, the nuts and bolts, <clears throat> you know, like you can hire somebody or even be the person that, that gets hired to take the marketing message and just paste it into a Kartra campaign. You know, there's a lot of people who are scared to death of things like Kartra. You know, they want the outcome. They love the idea of having an automated marketing system in their business where they can literally just throw people at it and it'll do all the work. You saw how the Kartra does that, right? It will do all of your follow-up sequences. It'll make all of your offers. It'll do all of your fulfillment. <clears throat> you know, if you have like, like a membership site, my, uh, my membership site, I've got like three different membership sites inside Kartra for completely different stuff. And over the period of time that I've been doing this, those membership sites have made me multiple millions of dollars on their own without my intervention. And all I have to do is provide the content. You know, this call that I do here, the support and mentoring on the back end, this is the only thing that, that really takes my time to do. And I like doing it so it doesn't seem like work. So again, I'm doing what I like to do, not what I have to do. So I've already done what I had to do, which was create the marketing campaign and automate it. I did what I had to do so I could be incredibly lazy, <laughs> which makes me very happy. <laughs> so would you consider this a membership site? Does this follow up program? Yes, absolutely. The ACT program is a membership site. You know, everybody pays the $29 a month to be part of it ongoing. You don't have to. The, the value here is in these calls. That's what everybody pays the $29 a month for, is to have access to me, access to the community, the brainstorming. Just the idea, like you show up on these calls <clears throat> and somebody else might ask a question that might just turn the light bulb on for you. It might be a, it might be your million dollar idea. And it was just because you, you know, you didn't even know what to ask. You just showed up and somebody asked the question that turned the light bulb on for you. You know, there's a lot of that that has happened throughout the years on this Thursday call. There's been people that have built businesses around somebody else asking a question and they're like, oh my God, I could do that. And then we help them figure it out. So, Leslie, did you have a question? No, oh, you're muted. 
now I'm here. It was just kind of piggyback on Allie's question. I think it was Allie. Uh -huh. For us that are just like putting our toes in the water, who's, what's Tammy's last name? I and mean, what are the first steps? <laughs> is, well, the, the first step, you, you don't need Kartra until you're actually ready to automate. So don't don't think you have to like jump in and buy Kartra today. Okay. I showed you Kartra so you know what's possible. I don't encourage anybody to buy anything before you need it. Right. I, I'm I'm showing you what I'm using, how it works. So you'll have in your mind, okay, when I get to that point, I want to use Kartra or I want to use something like Kartra. So the, the, the whole thing about today was not to tell you you need Kartra right now. Okay. It's, it's just simply to show you what's possible. Um, in the future, not today, but what's Tammy's, Tammy's last name? Tammy? Tammy Guerrero. And yeah, if you, she's on Alignable, you could connect with her on Alignable. She's, she's been in my group for several years. In fact, she's part of my higher level program. She's one of my apprentices. G -U -E -R -R -O. What was that, Leslie? G-U-E-R-R-O, Guerrero, Guerrero. There's an R in there somewhere. G-U-E-R-R-O. Yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't know exactly how to spell it. If you, uh, if you ping me inside the group, I can, I can connect you with her. No problem. John, you're way above my, you're brilliant, but you're way above my little small brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh no worries hey the the cool thing about the brain is it's expandable so you just you just keep showing up and i'm going to stretch that thing out for you <laughs> Boom. this is like mental exercise here this call this is this is where you this is where the work gets done <laughs> thank you all right absolutely all right woody did you have something else very last thing, you know, I <clears throat> you did a presentation a couple of weeks ago about uh, for AI, and there was a, a program you mentioned, and then I think it was $117, and I think we bought it. I, someone on staff, I think, ordered it. Was it and, marketing, marketing blocks? Uh, well, was it chat? CBG, because my fantasy is I've got tons of notes. I mean, and a lot of them are on topic and a lot of them are complete thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I would love just to love feed to feed it into AI. Yeah. And pop out my courses. Well, the, the chat GPT is a free thing. So you could you can get a tremendous amount. It's all about asking the right questions in there. The other, the program I think you're talking about that I showed how to how it worked was uh, it was called Marketing Blocks. It's one of the programs in the AI book, right? That I, that I featured, and it basically takes the back end of Chat GPT and it puts a front end on it that allows you to use it for all kinds of stuff like image creation. Um, It'll create voice, it'll create video, it'll do all kinds of stuff with AI. It's using the chat GPT back end, but they've put this front end on it that allows it to, you know, to create all this crazy stuff. It's pretty awesome. Is that Jasper? Jasper is is a different program. Or, Jasper, or I don't want to confuse me or you. Yeah, no, no. Jasper is it's an AI program like Chat GPT. They've put some some wrappers on it to make it easier, like some templates, but it's mostly for text, where marketing blocks is for you know images, text, video, voice, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so what can I feed all my notes into and get a book out of or get a course out of? If if I were you, I'd play around with the chat GPT for free. If it doesn't, if it's not, you know, user friendly enough for you, then you might try uh try Jasper. We'll you know, do. Or, or if you already bought marketing blocks, it's got the templates in there too. If you already bought that, then then go for that. It's probably cheaper than Jasper too, because you get a year. I think it was $297 for a whole year. 
And I think Jasper is about 50 bucks a month. Oh, that's quite a difference. Yeah. So it's about, about in the year, it's probably half the price. Yeah. <laughs> Will do. Happy hunting, everyone. All right. Well, cool, everybody. Thank you all for being here. This was an awesome call. And uh, I hope you guys got a lot of value out of it. And keep coming back. You know, there, I got a lot more to, lot more to share. <laughs> so. Well, I, I'll tell you what, it was more than $7 a week that I paid. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I don't even know what I know to share until you guys ask. So it's, it's a bottomless pit virtually. <laughs> so ask away and ask and ye shall receive. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great week and we will see you next week. Thank you, John. Awesome as usual. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.